So I just want to give a talk about not making my mistake. Okay, so I graduated from Princeton in 1990, and I didn't get out to Silicon Valley and join a startup or start a startup until 2000. It took me 10 years to figure this out. I actually went to a big company. I figured I'd get good experience. I'd learn how to be professional. You know, my parents would be happy. They'd spend all the money on the college. I could, I could get a good job and show that I could earn some money. And so I want you guys just to do me a favor. <laughs> Want to start? <laughs> Any start. It doesn't matter which one. Pick wisely, of course, but it doesn't matter. It's a mindset about being in a startup, about creating the world that we all live in. Right? I was just talking to this guy. He's, he's already taken a job with a startup, which is great. And as long as you start that way, your life is going to be so much better than if you start the other way. So typically, the mistake that most people make is they want to join a big, powerful company. And the arguments they give are the same ones I get, which they've got more resources. I'll get good experience. My mom has heard of them. She'll be pleased. <laughs> we don't say that, but that's what's going on in the script in the back of your head, in the inner cerebellum. That's what's going on. My mom will be happy. My mom will be happy for my dad. And this is faulty logic, it turns out. And I'm proof that it's faulty logic, because that's exactly what I did. I went to a company called GTE. G, no, GTE, and had all sorts of cool things going on techno technologically. In fact, I built a social network in 1991 in Hollywood working at GTE. But it didn't work out because it was a big company and I learned the wrong thing. The problem is, bureaucracy absolutely kills your soul. <laughs> it crushes you as a human being. And it demands <laughs> your mediocrity. Okay, it demands your mediocrity. You become a cog within a cog of a wheel of a division of a department. It's, bad, it's a bad deal. The entrenched people get the interesting problems. They've been there for five, six, seven years. When the cool things come up, you know, people, the bosses have to decide who gets the cool projects. They're not going to give it to you. They're going to give it to the person who's been there longer. And then there's limited upside financially because the stock is already appreciated and you know, there's really no place for you to go on. Okay? So joining a big company is the first mistake. The second mistake is thinking big companies are safe. And big companies are not safe. You know, you can't be laughed at for joining eBay. You can't be laughed at for going to PayPal. What about Yahoo? They're a good company. Everyone knows they're fun, right? The problem is you don't have any control of your destiny. That can kill your project. Okay? It's not safe. The thing you think you're being hired for could be gone in a month, or a week, or a day. You learn a lot less because you're a cog. You don't get to see as much. You're asked to work on the widget of, you know, uh, version 8.2.b.1. And fix that for me. And by the way, we've got some proprietary database software we need to work on with some machines from 1997. You learn a lot less because less happens. Right? These companies, you know, rev their product every year, every year and a half. And then the long, one, the last one, which you can't read, says you learn the wrong things. And this is really important. You get out there, you get into this company, and you think that the way they're doing things is the way the world is. You know. You're tasting, for many of you, the first time, you're really tasting what it's like to live on your own, live out there, live outside of this beautiful bubble called Berkeley. And it, you think, oh, this is the way things happen. Oh, we rev every year. That's cool. Wow, every six months. Wow, that's fast. Well, what about revving twice a day? What about relaunching your product twice a day? That's what we do at Google Labs. No one told me that you could rev twice a day until we kind of figured it out. But it took me 10 years. So don't, wait, don't waste that time. You absolutely learn the wrong things. I remember um, being in an elevator at GTE. I was wearing a tie, had on my like, leather shoes and stuff. And this guy in the, in the elevator says to me, nice tie. <coughs> he likes my tie. Thanks. And I get off the elevator and I realize, he didn't like my tie. This is a crap tie. He just didn't know what to say. Like the guy was just, his mouth had to move because he was in an awkward social situation. And, I, I did, and then I started listening for this all around me, in the cubes and in the offices, this is what all the conversation was like. Well, you know, Bob, those uh, TPS reports were coming out on Monday. Really the thing. And it was just one thing shit after another, and there was no information being transmitted. And I was shocked. And I just said, wow, OK, I'll, I'll learn to play this game. And so I learned to play this game. It was a horrible lesson to learn. It took me years to learn it and years to unlearn it. Don't do it. The other mistake that people make is they choose by salary. This is. This is a big mistake. So you've got income on the left and years at 21 all the way up to retirement, if you ever want to retire. Hopefully none of you will ever retire. This is what your expected income looks like, <laughs> punctuated by certain exit events of the startups you're involved with. 
Okay? But the fact is, over the next five years, the amount you're going to earn is de minimis compared to the overall amount. So don't sweat it. Who cares if it's 40 or 60 or if it's 60 or 68 or it doesn't matter. The fact is, you guys are all intelligent and capable and knowledgeable about the stuff that this world and the future world needs desperately. You're going to make more money than you need, literally. So don't worry about the next few years. And of course, after five or six years, you'll, you know, you'll learn not to worry so much at all. But just don't worry about that. You're going to make more money than you need. Okay? And money doesn't make you happy. Enough. So join a startup. It's not that all big companies are bad. I mean, hell, Google's a great company, right? They've got bottoms up. They've got lots of little projects percolating. They don't hire you for a particular task. They say, just come on in. We'll figure out what you do once you get here. You know, it's a much more option. So they're doing a really good job of trying to open up and right? distribute their system. At the same time, their business is very much a black box. That's why they make this so much money. But, um, they're doing a really good job of managing that company. So it's not that all big companies are bad. It's just 99% of them are bad. <laughs> they're just, it's just don't do it. You're, you're going to waste a lot of time. So that's my plea to you. There's only 25 or 30 people here right now. So you've got to be my evangelist and Philip's evangelist to tell the people you know, don't make James's mistake. You know, because they're not here to hear the message. Like, don't make this mistake. Take your life, make your life, make the world what you want it to be with startups so you can change something and do something. You can learn the right things, the right technologies, the right processes, the right communication styles, the right way of generating wealth. And it's not by letting someone force you into their system to work on you know, version 8.2.1. It's not, that doesn't help. So that's my plea. So I hope you guys will be that close, okay? Okay?